Hello everyone, my name is Kathy and I'm part of the sales and education team here at Pocono Sew and Vac. In today's video segment, we are covering Simple Serging 103. In Simple Serging 101, we covered how to thread your serger and how to do a four thread overlock stitch. In Simple Serging 102, we covered how to expand upon that four thread overlock stitch with different tips and techniques. And in today's video segment, we are doing the three thread overlock stitch as well as the rolled hem. That's just a, a really beautiful hem finish. So we have a lot to do today. Please make sure your machine is all threaded up and ready to go and it might be a good time to check those needles and put some new needles in. So with that in mind, let's get started with our serging lesson today. In Serger Fundamentals 101, we worked on the four thread overlock stitch which is found right here. And we have the front here and this is the back. And you can clearly identify the two needle threads, the left needle and the right needle, as well as your upper loopers going across on the top and your lower loopers going across on the back. Now in this video segment, we're gonna be working on the three thread overlock stitch and it utilizes only three threads, common sense here, and you're going to be using both the upper and lower looper threads, but you're only going to be using one needle. And the needle that you take out is going to determine if it is a three thread overlock wide or a three thread overlock narrow. You can easily see the differences in the stitch because the width of the three thread overlock wide generally matches the width of the four thread overlock stitch. And if you look right here, you can see something is missing. And what's missing is that right needle thread here. So in order to do a three thread overlock wide, you're going to be removing the right needle, the needle um, stitching that runs on the right hand side, and you're only going to be using the left needle. If we look at the three thread overlock narrow, you're going to see right here that again, a needle has been removed and it has been the left needle and you're only using the right needle, which will give you a narrower three thread overlock stitch. Here I have the three thread wide and the three thread narrow on top of each other so you could see the difference in width and how it also compares again to that four thread overlock stitch. People will ask me, when do you use the four thread overlock versus the three thread? This is really up to you, but I will give you some general guidelines. If you are making garments, kids clothes, you're making pants, things that take a lot of stress in the seams, like the crotch seam on pants, high stress area. If I'm using my serger, I'm going to be using the four thread overlock stitch over here. However, if I was working at my machine and I was doing a three thread rolled hem, maybe the day before or within the previous um, days, I would, I might consider leaving my machine set up for the three thread narrow and constructing a garment if it's relatively loose fitting because loose fitted garments are not going to take stress like the crotch on the pair of pants or a body con garment, a body con top, body con dress or leggings. If you are making leggings, by all means use a four thread overlock stitch anything that's snug tight fitting. Really, it's a lot of common sense. There's no right or wrong. You will probably make mistakes along the way. Everybody does, that's okay. But just keep working at it. Um, you're going to become more knowledgeable as far as which seam you want to use. Also, any of these stitches here, the four thread overlock, the three thread wide, or the three thread narrow, it doesn't have to always be for seams too. You could use these as seam finishes on the edges of garments on my four thread or my three thread. Sometimes if I want a no bulk tank top that I'm going to tuck in my pants, I will just finish the edge with one of these stitches instead of turning it under and top stitching. Less bulk, um, less show through under your pants. And um, there again, you have some options. You could use this as the edge treatment for pillows, home deck items, you name it, you're good to go. Let's move on on how to set up our machine for a three thread narrow stitch. This is the one we're going to be doing. And your choice is up to you on which needle you want to remove to do that particular three thread wide or three thread narrow. Let's look at our machine settings. When you are going from a four thread overlock stitch to a three thread narrow or a three thread wide, overall your settings are going to be exactly the same. 
on a serger like this. So if you are using the left needle only for a three thread overlock wide, your tension is still going to be set at three. If you're doing a three thread overlock narrow, you're only going to be using the right needle and your right needle tension will be set at three. You don't have to change it for the needle that you're not using um, because the needle's not going to be in. We're not going to have the thread in that tension guide. For your loopers, again, they're going to stay the same at three. Our differential, we're going to set this at one unless we need to change it, and this is not a lesson on differential feed, so we're just going to leave it at one. And our stitch length, we're going to use an average stitch length of three. Please make sure that you pay attention to what needles you are using. You do want to use HA1SP, SP standing for special point. These are sergers, so we use the serger needles in size 11 through 14. If you need to change them, please go ahead and change them before you're serging if you have been doing a lot of stitching. Okay, let's get up close and personal with our machines. Are you ready? Yes, you are ready. And you can see on my machine, the left needle was removed. I only have the right needle in. When you go to set your machine up for a three thread, what you want to do, this is my pro tip for you, do not cut the threads first. What you want to do is loosen one of the screws of the needle that you are removing, and then it will kind of drop down, but if you have the thread still attached, it's not going to fall all the way through, and you can easily just pull on the thread to bring up the needle. So loosen it, let the needle fall, just pick out the needle, and then cut your threads, and then pull the thread that you're not using all the way back and just tuck it on this you know spool of thread in the back of your machine just to keep it out of the way so it doesn't get tangled. What screws do you loosen? Well that's going to be dependent on what needle you're going to remove. So here is a screw right here for the left needle on top and there's a little L to the right of it. Here is the screw for the right needle and there's a little R for that screw. So you, you instantly know which screw is left or right. Remember the old adage lefty loosey righty tighty it applies to these screws so you're going to want to get out your small screwdriver and loosen the screw to remove it, to remove the needle. And then remember to tighten that screw. If you don't tighten the screw of the needle you're removing, do you know what's going to happen when you're surging at a high speed? That could work its way out, fall into your machine, never to be seen again. And then you will have to go to your dealer or order online that little screw that goes in there. So when you loosen, and you remove the needle, you go back to retighten it. I do want to point out one thing. This machine might look a little bit different to you. This is the 8002D. This will also apply to various Janome models like the 7034 and a few other ones. This light right here is very bright. We did make a modification to this machine. Lauren said she installed an LED light on it. So that's why this one may look a little different from yours. Lauren's a very handy girl um, and uh, she's just a great co-work to have, but she made this a lot lighter, a lot easier for me to see on this surface. So right here, I do have the left needle removed. I'm only using the right needle, and I'm good to go on this. So let's try to put a sample through and see how it looks. I have just sat down and re-threaded my machine, and I want you to remember some basic guidelines here. When you walk over to your machine to start working at it, I have a phrase in class. I say, butt down, rod up. So that rod, that telescopic rod at the top of your machine that you're not seeing right now, you pull that up with your hand to the highest position so that those threads can move freely through the guides and the tension disc. Please get into that routine of doing that because sometimes we forget and then we're going to have broken needles and that's never a fun thing to deal with. Everything is set to the guidelines that I mentioned before. Remember that um, if your foot is up, you will want to lower your presser foot. You don't have to raise that presser foot when you're inserting your fabric in the machine, unless maybe it's very thick and you need to help it along. Remember to follow the guidelines if you want to maintain a consistent seam allowance. I may not be so hot at this because it's kind of hard for me to um, film, talk, and press on the foot pedal at the same time. I got a lot of things going on here. I did make sure that I rotated my hand wheel 10 times toward me to make sure that I had threaded it correctly and everything was forming nicely on the stitch finger. Um, there is a question that I, I want to ask you. Where do you put your needle once you take it out of the needle bar? 
you know where I put it? And some people will have an issue with where I put my needle. When I take the needle out, I take the cone that I'm not using. This is my left needle thread and I will stick it right into that cone so I can easily find it. Now, people out there in cyber world will be telling me, and I'm sure I'll get some comments about it, you should never do that. You should never put your pin in your spool of thread because that point can weaken the fibers. You know what? That may be true, but I am a practical girl. I work fast, that's where I put it. Don't judge me for that. And I'm not gonna judge you where you put your needles either. All right, so I got my piece of fabric here. I'm gonna fold it in half. And I'm going to try to follow that. I'm going to use the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance right here. Let me put my foot on the pedal and angle the camera a little bit better. Things seem to be happening nicely. All right, let's see how this turned out. Okay, I have a beautiful, beautiful three thread overlock stitch. Worked out perfectly. I want you to try this at home. I want you to take out one of your needles using the guidelines I have given you. And I want you to experiment between the three thread and uh, narrow and the three thread wide. And let's see what you can come up with. I wanna see um, pictures of your progress or at least comment on what your progress was. We're ready now to kick things up a notch. What I have in store for you is the three thread rolled hem. This is a fabulous finish that people love on the hems of children's clothes, home deck items, the edges of napkins, pillows, you name it. It's a very, very beautiful finish. And I'm gonna show you how to do this right now. If you are unfamiliar or you feel that I'm moving too fast with some of the parts of the machine, please refer back to Simple Surging or Surger Fundamentals 101 where I talked about the parts of the machine. But I think if you just hang in there, you're gonna be doing a beautiful, three thread rolled hem in no time. It is time now to pick up your manual. And if you're using the Janome 8002D, on my manual it says page 31. If you have the 7034 or the 204D or another brand of machine that is that works similarly to this 8002D, you wanna look for the page that has the rolled hemming information. So we're gonna look at some of these settings. If you can do a rolled hem, it's going to be so easy to do the pico edging and narrow hemming, and I do want you to experiment with those once you become proficient with the rolled hem. It's just minor adjustments, but you have to pay attention to what you're doing. So we will have a change for the rolled hem in stitch length. Differential is going to stay at one. The needle plate setting knob, we're gonna to have to go into our machine and change that. It says you're using the needle on the right, and it tells you what size. It tells you what size thread to use tells you what threads are going to be appropriate, so woolly nylon, woolly polyester, or synthetic, the, the, what, what you have on your serger cones are fine. And it says lightweight fabrics such as organza, crepe de chine, lawn, georgette, you can use cottons. Just the lighter fabrics look so pretty with this rolled, um, rolled hem. It tells you right here that for the tension settings, you're only going to be using the right needle. It's kind of like a three thread narrow hem. But for the three thread roll hem, again, you're only using the right needle and your um, right needle tension should be set at four. Your upper looper should be set at three and your lower looper tension, look at this, should be set at seven. So they do have some differences there in tension. This is an imbalanced tension. Moving right up, they show you what, the, what your stitch should look like. And you know what, this is where sometimes people don't know what their stitch should look like and they look at these diagrams and they can't figure it out. All I can say is, I will show you what a good rolled hem looks like. And if you follow the instructions in my video to do a rolled hem, provided you have threaded it correctly, according to Serger Fundamentals 101, you should get a very good three thread rolled hem right away after making these adjustments. So let's look at our machine now and make the adjustments that it says to do in the manual. The first thing that needs to be done is to change the stitch length to R. Turn your stitch length knob all the way to the R. Make sure the R is in line with that little guideline on the machine. Differential feed should be set to 1.0, and it is right over here. Next thing to do is change the needle plate setting knob to R. I'm gonna have to re-angle my camera so you can see where this is. To access the needle plate 
setting knob, I'm going to have to do a couple things. Number one, open the door. Number two, open the side door. And remember in the first video where I showed you how to put your knife up and down? Well, this is where we're going to have to do it. I'm going to have to push in this knob over here. My knife is going to pop out and I'm going to rotate my knife to the down position. So my knife has been disengaged. I have to do this because I can't move this red knob. This is your needle plate setting knob. I can't move that from S to R. R stands for rolled hem until my knife is down. But I have to do one more thing. I have to push in my cutting width knob right here because if I don't, I still can't move that knob. Don't force it. You don't want to break it. Push this in. I like to hold, um, put some pressure on the right, push it right in. And while I'm holding it in, I'm just going to move that to the front. Let the width come back. If it doesn't snap in place, just give it a little tug. Then you want to put your knife back up. People always seem to forget this. So I need to put a little pressure here so when I'm pushing on my knob, my machine doesn't move on me. So I'll push it there and I'm going to rotate to this to the up position. You really have to push with a, a good degree of force. Some people think, you know, it's not moving. Well, you're just not pushing quite enough. Making that adjustment of knife down, pushing this in, moving the red lever, Pulling this back out and putting the knife back up pretty much has you set up for the rolled hem. The only other thing we have to do is adjust our tensions and make sure that you have the right needle in, which I do. Let's look at our tension settings now. We are only using the right needle, so this is the only knob that we have to be concerned with. And our manual says we should set the tension to four. I've adjusted that to four. Let's look at our upper looper tension. It says upper looper should be set at three. It currently is. Lower looper tension should be set at seven. Now don't be afraid to turn your needle tension knobs. I will be doing a video on a thorough explanation of tensions and how to adjust them and how you can recognize what's going on. If you are one of the people who has purchased their machine from us, you will have access to my tension explanation video. I put a lot of thought into how I want to present this. It's the way I do it in class. And I think once I do it, people really understand their tensions. It's like an aha kind of moment. That will not be a public video. Again, that will be a private video for our Pocono Sewing Back customers because we like to show how much we appreciate them by giving them a little bit extra along the way. Right now, we are ready to begin surging. So let's move the camera back just a little bit and we will get our fabric. So let's see how this looks. I got a sample piece of fabric right here and I'm just going to do a single layer and I'm gonna uh, align my fabric at about the 5 eighths of an inch mark. So let's see what's going on here. Going a little fast here. scissors jumping around on the table. Cut that off. All right, let's check it out. Look at that. It's a beautiful rolled hem. A little bit of thread got caught in that edge there. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. Very, very nice rolled hem. I am always really happy with these Janome machines. I think um, even though they're entry level, they really give a beautiful rolled hem. You could even do it on two layers of fabric because a lot of times, like if you're doing a pillow or you know, some type of home deck item, you might be working with two layers of cotton. And this is a very good quality quilting cotton that I'm using. And let's see how it did on two layers of cotton. Absolutely beautiful. Let me bring it up here a little bit so I can focus. Oh, so lovely. Such a nice delicate finish and you can actually feel the rolling of the fabric. It's like a nice little bump there. Just really, really nice. All right, so we've done the rolled hem. Now we have to switch it back to the three thread narrow. You've completed the rolled hem. That is awesome. I want you to think about one thing. How do you want your machine set up for the next time you use it? Are you going to be using it tomorrow? Are you going to be using it a week from now? Or maybe a month from now? Or six months from now? 
Do not leave your machine set up for a rolled hem if you think you might forget about where it's set at. So I want you to reverse it back to a three thread narrow overlock stitch. We're just going to reverse what we did to set it up for a rolled hem in the first place. So let's look on the front at our tensions. I want you to reset all your tensions to three. On the right side of your machine, I'm going to angle this for you. Set your stitch length from, it was set at R. I want you to set it back to three. And then I want you to make sure your differential is set at one. Open the cover and open the left cover. You need to put your knife down, push this in. Make sure your knife goes to the down position. Hold in your stitch width, push the red knob back to S. Pop it out a little bit if you don't hear a click back. Put your knife back up and then close the door here. Close the front cover and you are set up back at your three thread narrow hem. Very easy. Please make sure to save yourself some headaches and just reverse it if you don't know when the next time you're going to use your machine is going to be. All right, there you go. Good luck, everybody. I want to see your three thread wide, your three thread narrow, and your beautiful three thread rolled hems. Thanks for watching.